Tropical Storm Debbie has formed in the Gulf of Mexico, and it is expected to become a hurricane as it approaches the Florida coast tomorrow evening. And this is going to bring some pretty big impacts, including substantial flooding to areas like Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas. We also could see storm surge as high as seven to eight feet along the Gulf Coast of Florida. And then in addition to this, we're going to be watching for some hurricane force winds upon landfall late tomorrow night into early Monday morning. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about Tropical Storm Debbie and why this is concerning, even though it's not expected to become a major hurricane as of right now. So let's go and check out the satellite imagery. This is actually the geocolor imagery as of right now. This is what Debbie looks like right now. And you might be thinking this does not look very organized, but if you look closely at the low level deck of clouds, that is where we're seeing a lot more spin right now. And mainly why is because the mid and low level center of Debbie is currently just disorganized. It's not really aligned right now. If it is able to be Come aligned quick enough this could actually intensify further than just a you know strong tropical storm or a low and cat one hurricane but for the time being the forecast is that this will move to the north towards the big bend of florida as we go into tomorrow and it should end up becoming a hurricane before landfall no matter what happens with the low and mid-level center of debbie now overall this is obviously a pretty impressive system we got some of the outer bands already reaching southwest florida as we go into this evening and as well as into tomorrow we are going to start to see more of a tornado threat evolve out of this, especially across central Florida tomorrow. I think our greatest tornado threat will be across central Florida during the afternoon and evening tomorrow. We're going to talk more about that here in just a minute, though. Here's what the infrared imagery looks like right now, and one thing I wanted to show you here is all that dark red. Those are exploding thunderstorms across basically the southeastern Gulf of Mexico, Cuba, and Florida. Got plenty of storms blowing up, and that does indicate that there is some intensification happening right now. Now, this is the latest National Hurricane Center cone on Debbie, which again, right now, is a tropical storm. We are already feeling tropical storm impacts in the Florida Keys, where there is a relatively large wind field with tropical storm force winds, and there are also tropical storm warnings in effect, basically from about Cedar Key all the way back through southwest Florida. We do officially have hurricane warnings in effect for parts of the Big Bend of Florida, and then a few more tropical storm warnings back over near Apalachicola. Now, as we go throughout the day today, and as well as into tomorrow, this will continue to stay a tropical storm. Bearing any major changes to by tomorrow morning, this should just make Make landfall as a low-end Category 1 hurricane. The National Hurricane Center does have this forecast to make landfall at around about lunchtime on Monday, which honestly, I think it'll probably make landfall earlier than this, unless something does change. If it goes further up into the Big Bend, it definitely could make landfall that late. I would not be surprised, though, if we do see a landfall sometime in the very late evening tomorrow, or even into the early overnight hours. I think, though, honestly, I was thinking that this might make landfall around like 2 to 6 a.m., so it's very possible that this is similar to Barrel, where it makes landfall very early in the morning hours. Now, beyond Monday, it becomes extremely unknown what's going to happen. What I think will happen is that we are going to see this probably re-enter into the Atlantic Ocean, at least for a brief amount of time. It might intensify a little bit again, and then it'll make landfall again in the Carolinas, but it's probably going to be a stalled system for both Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, which means that the potential for some catastrophic flooding is not out of the question right along the Georgia and South Carolina coastline. So definitely something that we're going to be talking about in this video and something that we'll be talking about on the channel for several days. So make sure that you're subscribed down below. The latest storm surge forecast from the National Hurricane Center does indicate that up to seven feet of storm surge will be possible from the Oscilla River back through the Yankee Town area. So that's right around the Cedar Key region. Three to five feet of storm surge possible as far south as Cape Coral and also back over near Indian Pass and a more marginal three feet of storm surge will be possible from Bonita Beach back into areas like the Card sound bridge area. Now here's what the latest forecast is from the National Hurricane Center in terms of estimated rainfall, which I'll talk more about in detail here in a minute. But right now the general gist is that in Florida, we're not going to see the worst of the impacts here. Only upwards of 8 to 12 inches will be possible in that orange shaded area, which I say only because it could be way worse than that. We could actually be talking about upwards of 16 to maybe even 20 inches of rain back over in the eastern side of Georgia and as well as southern South Carolina. Now I do want to let you know that this is definitely subject to change and it depends on what happens here over the next couple of days in terms of the track of Debbie. Now here's the latest outlook in terms of the spaghetti models where all the computer models are bringing this. The basically consensus is that this will make landfall in Florida probably late tomorrow night and then as we go into Monday we're eventually going to see this move inland across Georgia and as well as northern Florida and then by Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday it probably stalls right off the coast of Georgia or it is still over land just producing a lot of 
of rain. And then after that, it should start to get picked up by the jet stream as we go closer to the weekend, meaning that this will probably end up going towards New England, where we could actually see some impacts there. But it is a little bit too early to pinpoint exactly what impacts we'll see up there and exactly when it'll actually get there. But I think it'll probably be there by the weekend. Now, here's the latest intensity guide from various computer models. And honestly, this could change. This was from the 18Z run, which was right after lunchtime today. Uh, we will have more runs tonight, which means that we might be going live tonight for an update on Debbie. If we do, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Most models still have this as a tropical storm on landfall, maybe a hair higher than that at maybe like category one intensity. But I still honestly think that this will be somewhere between a very high end tropical storm. So 70 mile per hour sustained winds, or it even could be a low category one hurricane around 75 to 85 mile per hour winds. That is what I'm thinking in terms of my forecast. I think overall, this will still be a big rainmaker. I don't really think it matters what intensity it is because it's still going to bring basically the same impacts either way. Now, this is the latest on when we're going to be seeing outer bands of storms, when we could see a tornado threat, and basically when I'm expecting this to make landfall. So as we go into the overnight hours, we're going to continue to see a low tornado risk right between Sarasota and Cape Coral. Make sure that you have a tornado action plan in place, because you could be caught by surprise tonight. I wouldn't rule out an isolated tornado. By tomorrow morning, our low pressure center is going to be spinning offshore west of Tampa. Overall, still not going to be super organized, but it will organize further as we go throughout the day on Sunday. We will also see an increasing tornado threat from these outer bands across central Florida, anywhere from Cape Coral back to Daytona Beach, and maybe even just south and around Gainesville, Florida as we go throughout the afternoon and evening hours. What we're going to be watching for is the landfall and when it happens. Now, the HRRR model is not a great model when it comes to hurricanes, but it does show you a pretty good idea, honestly, in my opinion, of what will be happening here. We're going to be seeing some very heavy rainfall up and down the Big Bend. Right now, the HRRR has this making landfall around 6 to 7 a.m. on Monday, so it's a very early landfall overall and then as we go throughout the day it starts to kind of weaken out as it moves more inland with a relatively very low tornado risk across central Florida. Now what's the wind going to look like? Well overall wind is not my greatest concern but it is something to watch for. Wind gusts near Tampa and Sarasota will be upwards of 40 to 50 miles per hour tomorrow afternoon and then eventually as we go into the evening hours tropical storm force winds will start to pick up and then as we go overnight into Monday morning those hurricane force winds are really going to start to pick up across parts of the Big Bend just to the south of Tallahassee, which Tallahassee could be dealing with some power outages tomorrow. So definitely make sure that you have some flashlights ready to go and have phones charged up. Just make sure that you're ready to go here for Debbie. Here's what we're looking at in terms of total rainfall accumulation. The HRRR model goes through 2 p.m. tomorrow, 2 p.m. Monday, excuse me. Overall, the majority of the rainfall will be back up in the panhandle where four to eight inches will be possible. Could have some isolated spots over a foot of rain and then back down through the west coast of Florida. Wouldn't be shocked if we had some areas like Tampa and Sarasota be in the same sort of boat where we're talking about, you know, five to maybe 10 inches of rainfall. Other areas like on the East Coast, mostly going to be between two to five inches of rain. Some isolated spots could be a bit higher than that. Now, beyond Monday, we're going to be talking about this for several days because what's expected is that this will probably stall as we go into Monday, Tuesday, into Wednesday. The GFS model has a sitting offshore of South Carolina really for over 24 hours. This could lead to some significant flooding in East Georgia and Southern South Carolina. Where it goes goes after really any time Monday is extremely uncertain, but we think it's going to stall. We think there's going to be a big problem with flooding, and then after that, it could go towards New England, or it could just kind of weaken out as it moves inland, but there's a lot of uncertainty really beyond Tuesday or Wednesday of this week when it comes to the system. One thing we're going to have to watch for, though, again, is this stalling, because it could lead to some very significant flooding. We could be talking about a widespread area of 18 to 30 inches of rain in South Carolina and East Georgia, and even up into North Carolina, we could also see something like that. So we have to watch this very very closely. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel and we'll continue to keep you posted with the latest on Tropical Storm Debbie.